So uh, we're now going to move into a small panel discussion with Dar Beiser, Angel Valentin, and Sharon Farmer. The idea for this panel is to get a feel for what it's like to judge photojournalism contests and perhaps glean some advice about what to enter and what will get judges' attention. I want to ask you all first about the role of contest in a career in photojournalism. And uh, I'd like to start with Sharon, as we're all hoping she'll come out of her shell a little bit tonight. <laughs> I want to ask you all first about the So role what do you think, Sharon? What, what role does the uh, contest play in photojournalism? It plays a huge role. It's bragging rights. If you don't have bragging rights, you didn't get a picture. So what do you think? Photojournalism is based on what you came away with that nobody else got. That makes it very, very competitive. It's bragging rights. If you don't have bragging rights, Angel. Yeah, Angel. Let's let's just talk about contests. Like when we were young guys working together here in Knoxville, you were we we did contests right away. I mean, it, it was part of our careers how we got going. Talk about how that worked for you and when it ceased to be a thing or whatever. So, so for me, it was a huge deal. I mean, I came when I, when I, before I went to Tennessee, I was at the Miami Herald and the Miami Herald had an incredible staff back in the day. And there were, you know, it, I think my South Florida is uh, region six and region six is really tough region. And the Miami Herald had photographers on the top of that, uh, of the ranking and the, and the, and the clip, the clip contest, the, 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 the kept the points every quarter or whatever. And, you know, I, I, when I was very young when I started in that staff and, and I never thought I could actually, uh, make the back of that, uh, that, that publication with the, with the, that kept track of the points. And one year I finished, I was, I finished like 25. Um, but I was only second to Patrick Farrell from the Miami Herald. So for me, that was a huge deal. Uh, and you know, you know, we're all competitive. Even if you don't like the attention paid to you, you go on a, on a, on a scene and you you compete with the with the other photographers. And it, it was a big deal to answer your question for a long time. It stopped being a big deal um, maybe 10, 15 years into my career, where I didn't care anymore. Uh, and and. And not that I didn't care about the competition. I just, you know, I, I, I had, I had, I had, I knew that I could do the job and it wasn't, I didn't need to, I, I did not need the validation. So yeah, but it, it's, it's super important to know where you are in the, in the food chain. Dar, what about you? How, what was it like at USA Today? You, you were a founding member of the photo staff there. Was contest entry important to the staff back then? Or what was that like? Yeah, well, it was to some of us. Uh, basically, we were pretty much uh, at the job that we wanted to be at. So it wasn't like yeah. we were trying to um, get a better job. But nevertheless, we, we, we entered contests to have as Sharon said the bragging rights you know with the um, uh, with our peers and to to be able to mingle with our our peers in, in, a, in a in a truly equal fashion yeah definitely Sharon yes are you back with us yeah talk about yeah. contests in your career I love contests because everything we can't do being football players or basketball in your face or hit a home run, you can do it in pictures and everybody can be at the same place and somebody walks away with the best picture. And even if it's not you, you hide your jealousy. You say, why didn't I get it? And you go, I'm going to work harder. But that's the fun of the thrill because it's just like being in, being in medieval battles, except you ain't hurting nobody. There's no blood and gore. I mean, nobody crying. If they do, they go off on the side, cry, come back, brave and bold again. Because pictures is also an attitude, which means that you have the attitude, I'm going to go get this bear. I'm going to make it the best bear it's ever looked like. And I'm going to keep walking it around at 360 degrees because I've seen all the angles, all the composition, all the background. That's why it's competitive. Definitely, most definitely. definitely. Um, um, one of the things that uh, came up a lot in the contests uh, when we were judging 
uh, and, and Darren Angel participated in that, which we very much appreciate. Um, I can think of during General News, there were like three or four different pictures of Pelosi that was st standing behind the president tearing up his speech. And uh, once it was determined which of those was the best, the others were all discarded. The same sure. thing happened with the fire pictures around in California where oh, yeah. we had like nine gorgeous spot news fire pictures and we kind of narrowed it down and then one fire picture survived and all the others got, you know, outed, even though some of them were really awesome pictures. And uh, just talk about the arbitrariness of like, if you do the contest judging with these four people on a Tuesday and then you come back on Wednesday and judge the same thing, you could have different results. I think it depends on if you had garlic or not. If you had garlic, that means your brain is sharp, you can talk. And it's also helpful to know that we all have personal whims. We all came up different. We came up under different photography folks. We've been judged harshly in our time. And some of us have been judged with kindness. So we keep excelling in what we do. Your reputation is everything. If you lie, cheat, and steal, first person's gonna know is the photographer. Because we got eyes in the back of our heads. We see everything. So it's very, very helpful to have an attitude that this is a competition. It's a healthy competition. You ain't hurting nobody. Of course, sometimes the truth does hurt. But it depends on who that is and what your purpose is. Personally, I think everything is fair game. Because this is a visual world. Television doesn't do it justice. Who does? Photographers do the view of the world quite right. Anybody else on this just about contests in general? I'm going to move on. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next, uh, uh, item in our thing. We, um, this year we, we saw some just incredible, um, new images that we're not used to seeing as Americans, uh, both uh, the pandemic and the racial justice movement. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk to all of you as a panel about what that <coughs> meant. Let's just start with the racial justice movement first. Um, what was that like? I mean, it, it, we had to create extra categories literally for the contest this year. We, we knew we needed to, and um, I appreciate the board voting that in. Um, but the racial justice movement was a tremendous change. And I remember one of the images in particular sticks in my mind. It was a black and white shot of DC during a big March. Um, and it looked, it looked like an interchangeable image with, I am a man, you know, from the sixties, it was so beautiful. And it was anyway, just talk about the, the, uh, racial justice movement and how that kind of affected news coverage this year. Well, the last is, is to had some effect. Let's talk about years of not paying any attention to what people of color were shooting, let alone overseas. Some of the best pictures I've seen came out of French magazines and German magazines when I was growing up. Um, whatever it takes for us to get to the point where we include everybody, we've come a long way. Because I can certainly talk about the years of nobody paying attention to anything people of color were doing. They were dismissed. And if they walked into the portfolio with their portfolio to the Washington Post, the Star, any newspaper, they were entertained, but they weren't taken seriously. And you have to go back four and five times for people to get you, then you're going to come back again if you don't hear a response that you're looking for. All this takes time. Thank heavens that we're all starting to interact, that we actually have white friends. We got Indian friends. We got Mexican friends. We need to integrate by more than word. We got to do it by deed. I did not judge the uh, social justice category, but I'll, t I'll tell you, as, a, as an observer of the news, it's just been amazing to see the, the images. You know, I live in the D.C. area, so I read the Washington Post daily. I read the New York Times frequently, and um, I'm, you know, the things I've been seeing just been stunning. Been stunning. And, um, and um, I think when we judged the the con the, the categories that I was uh, news and uh, uh, general news and spot news. 
there were a lot of pandemic images and uh, some uh, social justice images. And I just was praying that those were entered, <laughs> that they had been entered in the, in the uh, appropriate categories because uh, we we uh, sometimes felt like, well, this is not really in the right category. But yeah, the, the, the images coming from the, the um, Black Lives Matter movement and uh, social justice have just been stunning. And in a year that you just thought that the news couldn't get any more uh, compelling than the, the, this all started. Angel, what about Miami? Tell us about that experience. You know, I did not personally go out to cover the protest. I, I you know, I made a personal call not to do that because of COVID. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know, not old, and my wife's a germaphobe. I just, I just could not, I could not chance and 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 that that, uh, that home. Um, so I sat and watched everything, like you know, like a lot of people did from the, you know, from the comfort of my home, watching the. the the feeds coming in on the internet and on TV, and you know, it was so amazing. It was, um, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in the states, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't around during the civil rights era. But uh, it was, it was, it was like watching those uh, old grainy black and white uh, images back in real time, and um, <laughs> it's pretty inspiring. There's, there's some amazing photography and and and, and video images coming in, coming coming in on the. On the on the on the internet and TV, and it's 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 just a uh, it's pretty inspiring. Uh, a lot of young photographers, um, a lot of diversity, um, and 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 that was exciting to see. Cool. We've got a question from Christian Lee. Uh, after viewing images for many many years, what type of images still tend to rise to the top, in your opinion? It's a great question. I would like to jump in on that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, this is something I learned about myself in the judging the categories that I judged for this contest. The uh, it was the images that touched my heart that really jumped out at me, and uh, the, the technical technical proficiency has become I don't know what to say. I guess I shouldn't say easy, but uh, you you literally can't say I missed this photo because I was changing film, or I missed this photo <laughs> yeah. because uh, you know I I didn't have it in focus. All of that stuff is just out the window now. But yeah. when the the photograph goes through the lens and through the camera and into my heart, that's what, that's when it really jumps out at me. And uh, the, some of the photos that we saw in those news and uh, feature categories really, really grabbed me by the heart. And that, yeah. that, uh, that was what, that was, those were the photos that really made a difference to me. Definitely. Sharon, what do you think? I think it's a what love heart to the and top. impact. Art, art, art first, because art's got to have the impact that sets your image across from everybody else. It's going through your eyeballs. How do you feel? What's your brain telling you while you're looking? And if you get a twinge in your eye and it jumps, that's the picture, okay? That's the picture. And if that's not the picture, take two more, but don't stay in the same spot. I hate seeing people stay three or four, 10 shots in one spot waiting for something. No, refresh yourself, move around. And by the way, turn around and see what's behind you. Because sometimes the real deal isn't up on the stage. It's not where everybody wants you to pay attention, but it's a different place where you decided you needed some attention. Angel, what do you think? Angel, can you hear me? What do you think about that? 
Okay. Um, I was just going to say for my own personal thing, I get a lot of inspiration out of watching the, uh, the shooters in DC who shoot the yeah. same, same you know, thing I, over and I, over I, again all the time. I think it's really hard to the day to, to, um, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I'm back. Sorry about that. Did you fit? I, I, I had to, I had to refresh. Did you finish your statement? Whatever you were saying, Angel? I, I, I was frozen. I was just going to say that, that, uh, there, there are a lot, there are a lot more people with cameras out there nowadays yeah. and, and, and uh, people feeding just to social media. Um, it, 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 it's, it's gotta be it's hard to sort of uh, sort of stand out as a professional photographer in a in a sea of photographers and and and, and, and logistic covering this protest um, has to be uh, challenging um, and 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 making images that are different is 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 hard. Um, when you're looking at, at, a, at a body of work, the ones that the, I don't know if I finished. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's cool. You know, I, I also remember that that book that Kodak did years ago called The Art of Seeing. And that's what I was trying to say about the, the DC work that I see year in, year out. Um, and just people doing the same things over and over, pressers and stuff. And and they just seem to still get different images, you know, like Mill's picture of that lightning and Air Force One and the stairs. That was just amazing. So, yeah, it's cool. It's good to stay. I find it's very important to look at other pictures of other photographers on a regular basis to get inspiration for sure. Can uh, I say something? About, yeah, please, please. Something to that, Patrick. Um, you remember when we were judging, uh, I think it was general news, and uh, I was making the case for the photograph of Trump getting off the uh, helicopter, yes. looking like, he looked like a hundred miles of bad road, his tie loosened, his collar open, dragging ass, if you'll excuse me, across yeah. the South Lawn, and I, could just, when I saw that photograph, I actually had seen it in the newspaper when it, when it was, you know, first came out. I, I looked at that photograph and I thought to myself, the photographer who took that photograph had the, sh well, the worst <laughs> assignment of yeah. the day for any wire newspaper or news organization in Washington, D.C. He had to go cover Trump returning home after, ra after a rally in Tulsa. And it probably seemed like uh, <laughs> the, like I must the be worthless <laughs> to be given, be given this assignment. And he ended up with what I felt I still feel is, if not the most important photograph of Trump, it's very, very close to the top. Yeah, I, I agree. It was, uh, and not all of us hit it when we saw that come up in the judging. We didn't all get that right away. And then it was like, oh, wow. You know, uh, I've never seen a picture like that of him ever. So right. how many, how hundreds of thousands of pictures have been made of him? Who knows? But uh, never. that was really, really different. Yeah, right. He never will again either. I have another question from uh, the internet, people like watching, uh, when the judges see several similar photos, how do you pick the one that stands out? If I, if I may, I, the, pic, the picture sort of tells you that it's, that it's the best. I mean, I, I, I think, I think you, uh, yeah, there's slight differences, but the, I, I mean, in, in my, in my experience judging, um, 
there were there were so many good pictures and you make one round two rounds and then and then the best ones just keep popping up just just kind of stick in the back of to the back of your head and 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 uh they just stand out they just they just speak for themselves yeah it's i mean it's it's really hard you know to if you're one of one of 10 photographers shooting the same situation um uh to make a picture that that stands out but that's you know yeah that's what makes uh, that what ma that's what makes a great photographer i guess we just have a few minutes left i really want to break into the pandemic and the massive change that that has affected all of us not just in the united states but across the world um, seeing everything un unfolding in Europe, um, in China, and uh, it's just been a really horrific experience. And um, the coverage has been pretty stellar. Uh, we had a lot of entries. It was one of the largest entries in the contest this year. Maybe some of you could just talk about the width and breadth of the pandemic as sort of photojournalists, because it's it's a, such a huge thing and very difficult to get access to really tell that story. I can't even imagine be, be, being out of the business now, you know, being retired. Uh, I just don't even know where, where you begin to get the kind of access that you need. Uh, getting into hospitals, getting into nursing homes, getting into uh, families and situations like that. I, uh, so I, I should just shut up because I don't know. So I I, I um you know, I've worked for I've, I've covered the periphery of the story uh, haven't actually gone into COVID hot zones like hospitals and whatnot um, I've done portraits of people who have been affected by it and and you know with very very strict uh, 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 protection protocols um, but I've you know I've I've, I've just uh, uh, blown away by by the people who are deep in the in the hospitals you know interacting with with um uh is it, is it, is just a just a level of commitment but and, and selflessness uh it's impressive and and there's some very personal moving images that just uh just bring tears to your eye if you're not if you're not moved you just not you don't have a heart um it's it's a it's it's a it's a it's a challenge that that um you know i i, I can't imagine just uh just just um uh, you know how 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 you how you do that i mean I, we all know we all have friends who are working who are have been uh who have tested positive i was just talking to a friend a dc uh wire photographer um got sick got his wife sick and his two teenage uh, kids sick um you know a wire photographer out there doing this every day um it's i i, I it's just uh i i, <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm standing back and not getting in the middle of it and it's it's a uh, it's a big story that needs to be told, obviously, um, and a lot of people have sacrificed their lives doing it. It's like Sharon, wartime. can you talk about COVID? Yeah. 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 It's like Please, wartime. Go ahead. It's like wartime. And it's scary to realize you can die from doing your work as a photographer. There are no rewards for a dead photographer. None, none, none. <laughs> So you have to be careful. You can't be around a lot of people. You got to pick and choose what you're going to go to. And you got to know as soon as you come through your door, you got to wipe your gear down, change your clothes before you get too far into the house. Because what I get from the guys up in New York City, hey, they live a, a, a am I going to live today or not every day? This is very, very scary because you don't know how it jumps on you. Yeah, I, I agree. I remember, I, I love reading the New York Times as well, Dar, and I, I, I remember being stopped dead in my tracks with a little photo essay that was shot by a nurse who had was bringing a camera to work and shooting these images, right. and they were stunning. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh. And you could see that she wasn't exactly a super highly trained photojournalist, but she was making these amazing pictures and the sadness and the tiredness and all that was coming through those. It was just phenomenal. Um, so anyway, well, we are 
out of time for this segment. And uh, I just so appreciate all of you participating. Thank you so much for helping out with the judging and participating in our panel discussion tonight. Thank you so much, all of you, for doing that. Thanks for having us. Honored Thanks to be here.